I'm sure at one point or another in your life, you have wondered, who are my ancestors? How far can I go back in my family tree? Where do I come from? For most of us, we know our parents, grandparents, maybe even great grandparents, and it usually stops there. If we have the resources to do some deeper digging, maybe we can go back a few hundred years. But something many people don't know is that you can actually trace your direct maternal or paternal lineage back tens or even hundreds of thousands of years through haplogroups. Haplogroups are genetic markers that are passed on to offspring. With Y-chromosome haplogroups being passed on from father to son and mitochondrial haplogroups inherited from mother to daughter and son but can only be passed on by the daughter through the matrilineal line. In this video, I will talk about how haplogroups work, the different haplogroups of the world, and how you can find out your haplogroup and what it can tell you about your ancestry. Like I explained before, a haplogroup is a genetic marker in your DNA that allows us to track who your ancestor is through your patrilineal or matrilineal line. This genetic marker is a genetic mutation that happens in an individual. So when they have children, they inherit this new mutation, and this is passed on. When I say mutation, I don't mean someone with three noses and nine fingers. All a mutation means in this context is a slight change in DNA sequence, usually a result of SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphisms. This is a mutation where a single base pair, A, T, C, or G, in the DNA sequence changes. The oldest Y-DNA haplogroup is A, and the oldest MT or mitochondrial DNA haplogroup is L. Technically, we are all descendants of these haplogroups going back hundreds of thousands of years. It's just that the descendant populations of these haplogroups had changes in DNA sequence creating new haplogroups later on. And through these haplogroups, we can trace back to a single ancestor that existed thousands of years ago. Worldwide, there are many different haplogroups. If you do an ancestry DNA test and upload the data to a website that does haplogroup analysis, you can find out your haplogroup. If you've never done a test, you can just search up your country of origin or ethnicity and find out the most common Y-DNA or MT-DNA haplogroup of your community. So how do you trace your ancestry? Well, I'll use Y-DNA R1 as an example, which is a subclade of R. The biggest Y-DNA haplogroups in Europe, meaning patrilineal haplogroups, are R1A in Eastern Europe and R1B in Western Europe. R1A is believed to have spread with the Indo-Europeans, the Yamnaya culture, also known as the Western Steppe Herders, and it is believed that the ancestor of R1 originated in Central Asia and Southern Siberia 25,000 years ago. Now, R1A originated in Eastern Europe, most likely within an Eastern hunter-gatherer man 20,000 years ago, thousands of years before the Indo-Europeans. The Indo-Europeans themselves were a mix of Eastern hunter-gatherer and Caucasus hunter-gatherer, and they retained the R1A haplogroup. They then spread this haplogroup throughout Europe with their conquests about four to 5,000 years ago. R1B, on the other hand, split from R1 in Central Asia around 20,000 years ago, going south into the Middle East, and a few thousand years later, it had reappeared in the Pontic Caspian Steppe in Eastern Europe, staying in close contact with their R1A cousins, and with the spread of the Yamnaya culture, the Indo-Europeans, from the Pontic Caspian Steppe, they spread the R1B haplogroup to Western Europe. R1A is also found commonly in South Asia, and this is because of this same population, the Western steppe herders, the Indo-Europeans, the Yamnaya culture. Around 3,800 years ago, populations descendant of the Western steppe herders entered South Asia. Cultures like the Andronovo culture or Sintasha culture carried this R1A haplogroup, and their descendant populations entered into South Asia. They mix with the indigenous population. Western steppe herder DNA peaks in northwestern Indian subcontinental people, and it is also slightly higher in Brahmins in any ethnic group in South Asia who are the highest caste. However, even if a South Asian man did a DNA test and found out he had very little steppe-related ancestry, he could still be from the R1A haplogroup. And I bring this up because it's very important to realize that a haplogroup is a lineage from a specific ancestor X amount of years ago. If it is passed on from the paternal line, it means that your father had the same haplogroup and so did his father and so did his father and so on. 
Everyone with the Y-DNA haplogroup R1A are direct descendants of one specific man who lived in Eastern Europe around 20,000 years ago where this subclade originates. This doesn't mean Indians are white Europeans, but it does mean that hundreds of millions of Indians can trace their ancestry back to one man from Eastern Europe. Even if the vast majority of their DNA comes from ancient, non-Western steppe-related people, like the AASI, or Ancient Ancestral South Indian, and the Iranian hunter-gatherers. Everyone with haplogroup R is a descendant of one man who lived in Central Asia around 27,000 years ago. All over the world, there are plenty of different haplogroups and subclades of these haplogroups. I think it's pretty interesting that you can actually do research on your own haplogroup and trace your ancestry back to a proposed specific region and time. Obviously, there's a lot of research being done on these haplogroups, so with time, there will be more theories and archaeological evidence that may shift where these people lived or these migrations happened. But the cool thing about haplogroups is that it literally all goes back to one ancestor hundreds of thousands of years ago on both your patrilineal and matrilineal sides. Because haplogroups descend from other haplogroups, older haplogroups, and we can trace it back to Africa. Y-DNA haplogroup A00 originated with one male human 275,000 years ago. He's the ancestor of all humans. The oldest matrilineal DNA haplogroup, MT, you know, mitochondrial DNA haplogroup is L0, which is estimated to be around 150,000 years ago. So this, through our paternal side, we know there's A00 being the oldest haplogroup. Through the maternal side, we know L0 is the oldest haplogroup. So we know that all humans are descendant from these two people, and one lived 275,000 years ago, the other lived 150,000 years ago. Meaning the one common male and female ancestor of all modern humans lived at different times, though both of them are still our ancestors. So to wrap it all up, haplogroups are like ancient fingerprints in our DNA connecting us to ancestors who lived tens of thousands of years ago, even hundreds of thousands of years ago. They don't tell the full story of your ancestry, but they do give us a direct line back through either our father or mother's side, a kind of genetic breadcrumb trail through time and migration. Whether your Y-DNA haplogroup is R1A, R1B, or something else entirely, or your MT-DNA traces back to L, M, or N, you're part of a much larger human story, one that started in Africa and that spread through every corner of the world. It's pretty amazing that with just a small piece of your DNA, you can uncover part of your story and see how your lineage connects to ancient movements, cultures, and even specific individuals from prehistory. Thanks for watching, and I hope this sparked your curiosity about where you came from, not just in recent generations, but deep into human history. If you want to learn more, explore your own haplogroup, and keep discovering the human journey, be sure to like, subscribe, and stick around for future videos.